Hey everybody, Don Fishback here, and in this video we've got a complete trade analysis, but more important, we've got a great deal. So if you stick around, watch the trade analysis as we dissect one of Bob's trades, and then at the very end, I'm going to give you a free software offer where you can use Odds Online free until April 20th. So watch the video. Hey everybody, Don Fishback here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about two things. Uh, one, we're going to talk about a trade that one of our customers uh, emailed us and asked us uh, to our opinion on it. And the other thing I want to talk about is uh, this headline right here that was on CNBC.com and they're talking about this was the fast, well, you can read right here. This was the fastest 30% sell off ever, exceeding the pace of the decline during the Great Depression. And there's two things that I like about this. One, they're talking about the magnitude and they're talking about the pace or the velocity. Because in options, it's not like stocks. With stocks, you're concerned about direction and you're concerned about the, any dividend that might be there. But with options, you're concerned not just about the direction or you may not be concerned about the direction depending on the trade you have, but you're definitely concerned about the magnitude and the time that it takes to make that size of a move, so you, which we call volatility, right? So it's magnitude over time. So this thing really covers the things that we look for in options. It, the headline covers it beautifully. And as you can see, over the last week or so, we have had, well, since February, we have had one of the biggest, uh, fastest declines in, of a 30% magnitude in history. And we can sort of see that up so, uh, in this next chart. Um, and it sort of combines what Bob uh, was talking about with respect to his trade. He was looking for a one week size move. So he's, there's a period, one week, and he was looking at the size. And what we were looking at, he wanted to know uh, how frequently the market moved down 15% in one week. And so what I did was I looked at my database, my trusty database, and I went and I looked at five-day moves in the S&P index. And what we've done is we've got, so this right here, We've measured all the, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the maximum move down. So not from this day to this day, but if it went like this, I'm counting the low that it might have made. So I'm looking at the maximum move down. So we call that a drawdown. So I'm looking at the five-day maximum drawdown on a closing basis. And you can see here, this is um, a 1% move, something less than a 1% move. And there were about 7,500 of those and a 2%, 1 to 2% move, and there's about 4,000, and a 2 to 3% move, there's about 2,000, and a 3 to 4, there's about 1,000, and so on and so forth, until it just basically disappears right here. Well, we know that there are actually some numbers over here, so we're going to zero in on that area on the right side over there, and that's what this chart brings us. And so now we're looking at a uh, 10 to 11 percent move down there were 30 of those and an 11 to 12 there were 25 of those and 12 to 13 there were about 15 and it goes further on down and then you can see these the really extreme moves over here uh, but there was no one week drawdown worse than minus 31 percent so in fact that it's about 30.6 so these are, these are very infrequent. And in fact, what this next table shows is that they are clustered together. So the 25 largest one-week drawdowns in history occurred during the week of October 13th to 16th. You had, so if you go from the 13th to the 19th, that was a gigantic move down. It was about 30 point, almost 31%. The 14th through the 20th was something else and so on and so forth. So they were all clustered in that one week, that one crash period in 1987. Then you go have to go to 1929. And you had a big move down, stable, and then another big move down. And over a one-week period, the worst was the 29.5%. 
and the smallest drawdown was only 18.6. And then here we are. Look at this. This is here. We are right here, right now. Um, just huge downdraft of 19.3 percent. The then you have to go to 1933. There's the financial crisis in 2008, and then again we go into 1932, and then 1931. What you need to see here, though, is they tend to be not always, but they tend to be. Well, first off. October, 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 September, September. So they tend to be in the fall. Uh, you had the July 1933 that was a little bit different. And then, of course, the coronavirus has prompted something that is not seasonal at all. But there tends to be a seasonal, uh, nobody knows the reason why, but there's a re there, they tend to cluster in the October, September period unless there's a fundamental event that causes it just to come out of nowhere. And like we talked about, this is a deflationary shock that came out of nowhere. Not like 2008, where everybody could see it, not everybody could see it coming, but we know that that was a self-inflicted wound from over leverage in the housing market. Uh, this is just the economy shut down. So anyway, they tend to be separated. And so that brings up, other than those shocks that we just highlighted right there, they all tend to be, the, these one week drawdowns, all drops, all of them are smaller than minus 15%. So that's about, that's about as extreme as it gets. Well, we can look at the price of SPY and say, I'm gonna go 15% down and think that we're not We've already had a shock to the system. It's not going to get any worse than that. And so we can say 228, 228.80, and then go down 15%. And we can sell a put below that and buy a put further out for one week in time. And so this was as of Friday, uh, where it was a 228.80. And so one week later would be the uh, March 27th the next Friday, and the strike price that we are looking at, and I'm going to get my glasses because I need to see a little bit better than that. The strike price that we're looking at would be to sell the 195 right there. And now you know, I've talked about this before, I like to go like $3 further out. So if I sold the 195, I'd be looking for the 192. In this particular expiration series, we don't have the luxury of that. We go from 195 all the way down to 190. So we're, that, that's, you, you take what the market can give you. And so you do the 195, you sell that one, and then you buy this one, the 190. So you sell this one for 198, you buy that one for uh, 150, and that is a credit of 48 cents. And then to stress test this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the assumption that it's going to be at least as bad as it was during this period right here. I'm going to say it's going to be, we're going to see, a, we're going to see this, which has been gut-wrenching. We're going to see the gut-wrenching period all over again. Oh, for, for this week. It's going to repeat, history is going to repeat itself. And so I can do that with odds online. I just choose the, um, I just, and we'll show you if, how to do this in the coaching. And by the way, I have an offer for you that you're going to really want to stick around to hear. Um, we can do that by making a time period selection and a volatility selection. And odds online will make that catastrophic assumption. And when we do that, you get option values of uh, 137 and 86. So 137 and 86. Now, the options are priced substantially above that, but what we're interested in is we want to see, we're looking at the differences. So the 137 versus 86 over here, that's a difference of 51. So if you look at that, you've got a bid on that spread of 48, You've got an ask of 57, and the stress-tested uh, FOVIV is 0.51. So 
Assuming you could get filled somewhere in between, which I think is pretty likely, those things are relatively liquid. The bid, you know, it's not a Monday or a Wednesday uh, where there's a little bit less volume. Uh, Friday up weeklies are tend to have pretty good volume, pretty narrow bid ask spreads. So I would expect that you would be able to get filled somewhere in between that. And let's just say it's 50, 51 cents. So you're getting right in there. So um, you're able to put this trade on for a price that is representative of what the of what the market is expecting and which is another catastrophic period right there. So this and this gives you so this is the at the money this this bell curve right here represents the volatility of the at the money options. This is the distribution that uh, actually happened during that catastrophic time period right here. So you can see made a lot more big moves than the mark than the at the money volatility expected and a lot of fewer small moves than the uh, implied volatility of the at the money options. But remember these are out of the money options so they're actually probably pretty close to being represented accurately by the distribution. Um, Anyway, what we're looking at here is we can get the actual probability assumptions that were that actually happened based on that catastrophic time period. And when we look at it right down here, we're seeing that it's going to be about an 11, 12 percent uh, probability of success if we get, that's what the price is implying, a 12 11 to 12 percent probability of success and over the next uh, for that particular trade over the next week and so you've got about a 12 percent I'm sorry 12 percent chance probability of loss I said 12 percent chance of success you've got an 88 percent chance of success with a 12 percent probability of loss so you've the trade would pay 11 percent if you made money so you got about an 88 percent chance of making an 11% return, you've got a 9% chance of losing, and you've got a 3% chance of something in between. So when you multiply all those things out, it actually comes that the, the FOVIV, the spread, everything is priced about right. Um, it's, not, it's not like a gigantic bargain. You're not being able to put something on where you're going to make a ton of money, but that's making the assumption that the market over the next few days is going to be as bad as it was over the third worst period in stock market in stock market history. So if you think it's going to be as bad as it was a week ago when the market was just having one of those gigantic spills, then this thing is actually priced about right. If you think any spill will be, the, the market will not go down as fast, this thing is priced really well. And if you think, oh my gosh, we're going to get another 1929 or we're going to get another 1987, then this thing is not, is not right. It, it's, it's priced too cheap. So that brings up uh, a little bit about modeling. So I love to use a model to value options. I mean, I like to look at the bell curve model to get an idea of what everybody else is thinking, and then I like to use my own model to get a better idea of what's going on. This is, what's going on right now is extremely difficult to model. And the reason it's extremely difficult is because it's what I call a binary event. Right now you're having politicians in Washington debating whether to pass a stimulus bill or not. And if I was around back in 2008 when the first TARP legislation went down in flames and the stock market got popped hard, it really got hit hard. And so what, what's going on right now is the market's performance going forward, it, at least this week, 
and we'll, next week might be a little bit different, but at least right now, because of the what's going on in Congress, this is what I call a binary event, where either the legislation passes or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, all bets are off. If it does, we might get a pop to the upside. So it's one or the other. There's no in-between. So when you look at something like this, it's either all here. It's, this doesn't make any difference. It's either all here or it's all there. It, there's nothing in between when you get these binary events. So you've really got to be careful about using a model. It's very difficult to model. Um, doesn't mean once they get it passed, you can't revert back to something. But uh, until that thing goes up or down, it, just, just be kind of careful out there. Because, um, and this is another thing I wanted to stress, is be, when you're doing this, just be careful out there. Um, you, the, the, the point about this is you need to stay in the game. Now, I've done three credit spreads in March, and uh, so I'm going to like call myself out right here. I did uh, 10 spreads for one week. I did 10 spreads for another week, and I did 20 spreads for um, a monthly expiration. And which is the one? So that I'm not equally allocating across, right? I favored one and doubled up on one. Well, which one was the loser? It was the one that had the 20 spreads on. So you don't want to do what I say, not what I do, right? Um, which, so this position right here, it survived a stress test under terribly onerous assumptions. But it doesn't mean that this is the one that is going to win. Um, it, it, you just don't know it. So you've got to, it, just like in poker, just like in poker, a complete novice can be in a game with somebody that has an armful of World Series of Poker Championship bracelets, right? And all of it, all it takes is, gosh, it's an Alan Parsons project uh, uh, album, turn of a friendly card for the novice, and the expert gets beat. And that's what we call it, that's luck. That is luck. But the novice is not going to win over the long haul. It's just not going to happen. But every now and then you can get some luck. And so to avoid that, you need to allocate smartly because it's important that you stay in the game. That's, that's, you, you don't want one trade wiping you out. So allocate smartly. Be aware that models work really well a lot of the time, but there are some times that they don't and you should be able to stay in the game and win over the long haul. So when I said I've got an offer, I wanted to just mention this because we, we are here to help. We know, I can't imagine what it might be like for somebody that's not actually in this business to be out there starting trying to trade. So what we're going to do is we're gonna try and give you some help software-wise and education-wise. Odds Online, our software, it's going to be free for the, uh, until April 20th. So the next options expiration, the next monthly options expiration is April 17th. It's going to be free until the following Monday. And you can just go to the website, www.donfishback.com slash free help. And there's no obligation. There is no contract and no credit card required. You just go there fill out the application, and we'll make sure you get it. And so you'll get, you're going to get the software, but then you say, oh, my gosh, you showed me stuff that the software can do. I have no idea what, I have no idea how to use it. We're pairing that with coaching. We have, when the software comes with weekly coaching normally, but what we've decided to do because of this incredible time period that we're in, uh, very interesting times, right? Because of that, we are going to have coaching um, every day. So at 2 o'clock Eastern time, Brian, who's a 20-some-odd-year veteran, he's been trading options since 1998, I know, maybe 97, 
uh, Brian is going to be using the software, showing you how to use it, uh, showing you how to find trades. He'll even assign you, maybe you might get assigned some homework where you go use the software and see if you can find trades. And then all of you will come back and evaluate everybody else's trades and try and come up with trade ideas as a group. So it's a great way to learn. It's a great resource and it's free for about the next month. So that's it right now. Um, let's see what Congress does, right? Uh, in the meantime, if you like what we do, let us know. Subscribe, comment, like our videos. It really helps us to get the interaction going. And thanks for watching.